failed. So last week I had my first freelance gig in a while. I was hired by a media company that a good friend of mine works for and it involved a three-day shoot at a fancy hotel in the Indianapolis metropolitan area for a convention called KookieCon. And I thought, okay, this will be a great way to get my foot in the door for freelance filmmaking. I'll get some decent money, uh, I'll be able to, and maybe it'll even work so well that I'll be able to book more gigs in the future and maybe be able to quit my part-time job. But that didn't happen. So day one starts about 10 o'clock in the morning. All we did was go around shooting whatever we could freestyle. I got to use the Sony a7R with the 24-70mm to L lens, which was totally awesome getting to use a mirrorless full-frame camera. We also had the Osmus, which I didn't get to use because it requires an app to download in order for it to function, and it didn't really make much sense for me to download it, only to never use it again. In addition to that, we also had a Sony A7 that I didn't get to use, but was pretty stoked about. We also set up a Varizoom jib crane with a motorized gimbal, which was absolutely so day two was when the trouble started. Up at 5.30 a.m., make breakfast and about a half hour drive to Indianapolis for my arrival at 7.30, plus 15 minutes to park. We had four cookie decorating demonstration classes to film. But firstly, we discovered that the A7R2 has a recording limit. Now, before I go any further, let me just say, camera manufacturers, for the love of God, get rid of the recording limit on your cameras. Looking at you, Canon and Sony. Anyway, as I said, these demonstrations were about 45 minutes long, which means with that recording limit, we missed the last half of them, which is where most of the demonstrating happened. This meant we had to redo two of the classes, which added an additional two hours to the shoot day. And needless to say, we were not very happy about that. Oh, I'm so sorry. We then proceeded to use the Shogun that records to SSD drives that doesn't have a recording limit, but even that gave us problems. We would turn the monitor on once we had moved everything to the next room, and it would say we would need to update the firmware, which didn't make much sense and really wasn't really possible because we only had 15 minutes between setup times, between classes, you know, to get everything set up. We would turn it on and off and eventually it would work. However, the last class we did, it for some reason, I didn't even touch it. I it said it was locked, which okay, means you you know, if you press a button or press the screen, it doesn't do anything. But then it randomly shuts off. So I'm frantically trying to get this thing to turn back on because it's in the middle of a class, and this took a few good precious minutes. But we got it back on and recorded for the rest of the session. So after all that, 6 p.m. came, I was done for the day, and to be very honest, I was having some conflicting thoughts. So, I'm back home now. Um, I'm just kind of sifting through my mail, sorry. Um, so now I'm just trying to think. Um, I don't know, I don't know starting to have second thoughts about a freelancer but being a freelancer but um the next morning i was up at six and out the door at seven and i have to admit i'm not much of a morning person but i did appreciate the morning air and drive <sighs> love the smell of 7 a.m I 
actually a half hour early, so... So I get there at about 8 a.m. and none of the guys are anywhere in sight. So I then proceeded to sit in the lobby for about 45 minutes. Finally, I get a text to come up to the second floor where most of the convention is being held. I get a phone call from the same guy and he says to meet him by this room and I tell him I'm there but he's not. And we have this back and forth banter and misinformation on both sides. So finally, I meet up with him and he tells me this, you need to talk to me with more respect. Now, I agree, I didn't handle things with the best attitude, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I feel I wasn't treated the best either for what I just talked about. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's a video for another day. Also, I'm not trying to spread any bad blood with anyone at all. I'm not naming names or providing any more context that I have provided in this video. I'm here to disclose my feelings as a filmmaker, which we'll get to that later. I'm assigned to the task of being a human light stand. It may not sound like a big deal, but when you have to carry this big light stand over your shoulder for the duration of about four or five interviews, and the fact that there was no stand made it very painful and frustrating. After that was finally over, the rest of the time spent there was going around shooting b-roll of the vendors and live demos. So after we did that for about two hours, um, they basically said, uh, we're done for the day. Um, there might be some other stuff, but it's nothing we can't handle on our own. Um, so we thanked each other for the work and thanked them for the opportunity. Um, and uh, after that, I was on my way. So you may be asking yourselves at this point in the video, well, where's the failure? Everything you've explained, you know, is relatively routine stuff. Well, firstly, I sent the invoice, and I got a brutally honest response, saying that most of my footage was unusable, and that they almost lost all of their data from the time machine backup, which I don't really know what that has to do with me, because I didn't really have anything to do with dumping footage, except when I gave them my hard drive to dump the footage on, but Whatever, that's neither here or there. But more importantly, he said that my behavior was objectionable, and it created a lot of stress on those two. And those words hit me hard. But in the end, he was right. I wasn't the best that I could have been, both behaviorally and performance-wise during that time. Now, with, now, without making any excuses, I am by no means an expert in interacting with people. I'm only passable at best. I have ADHD and Asperger's, so the way I handle certain situations doesn't come off to me as rude or offensive. It's how my mind naturally reacts to things. That being said, it doesn't mean it's right though. And as of recently, I've been trying to change my attitude about things. I'll go more into this in another video, but to give you sort of a short summary, the change in attitude, I gotta admit, it's made things a lot better. You know, it's 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 weird because I never re I've never really thought about this sort of thing. I'm just I'm more tolerable with people and coworkers, and even my bosses took notice of the attitude change. And another disclaimer, I am by no means trying to gain any sort of pity or sympathy from you guys or anybody in general. I'm just here to hold myself accountable for my failure. 
Now, as far as the filming aspect goes, looking back, while I haven't looked at much of the footage, I don't have a lot of it with this ge with this gear that I've never used, and a lot of shots came out soft and shaky. And maybe I didn't communicate clearly enough, or should have used a monopod, but that's besides the point. The main problem for me was the quantity over quality, which we'll go into in the next video. Um, making sure I was more concerned on how many shots I get versus how good the shots were, if that makes any sense. So after a few back and forth emails, I spent the next couple of days thinking, maybe I wasn't cut out for this. Maybe I should have turned this opportunity down. Maybe freelancing isn't for me. Or maybe I should just be an editor, or maybe I should just give up filmmaking as a career and find something else to do. I then started talking to people about what happened. Ryan, Dylan, my girlfriend, and my old teacher, Don Wetrick. And this is what he had to say. Temporary setback, and I'm sorry to hear it, but you've got another 70 years to live, man. So what's your next move? Immediately where my head is going is that you should do a video saying, hey, got a first gig in a while, and I blew it. Brutal honesty and a little bit of self-deprecation and a little bit of transparency goes a long way. I think, um, I don't know, I think one, it'll be therapeutic for you to do it. And number two, it, it might show to your next person, okay, okay. Everybody has that because in a lot of ways you, you, you want to create that sympathy and that whole, okay, I'm getting back on my feet and <laughs> it didn't work out as well. But on the next time, it'll be better. Dude, so you need to like take a step back and then realize like, I mean, you've got a long way to go, man. Like you're going to live to you're probably 85. So a setback here and a setback there, that's fine. Um, I mean... <laughs> Easy for me to say because I'm 46, but uh, just the sheer joy in life is life. You know, you're going to look back on it and go, remember that time I took that freelancing job and I totally effed it up? And you're like, yeah, I did. And then you're just going to, you're going to laugh because who doesn't? This man is just awesome, by the way. He, he knows how to uplift someone. It's never what I expect to hear, but it's always what I need to hear. Now, I am not a stranger to failure, academically speaking. I failed so many tests and so many classes. Yeah, it's not even funny. I even had to repeat the second grade. In high school, I didn't pass Algebra 1 until I was a junior. I wish I was lying, but it's the truth. But never once did I ever think about dropping out or quitting. Partly because I couldn't, thanks to my mother but I still wanted to prove myself that I could do it. I wanted to put on the gown, I wanted to put on the cap, I wanted to turn the tassel, and I did with everybody else in my class of 2016. The point I'm trying to make here is that you're gonna fail a lot more before things work out. Failure teaches you more than success, and truth be told, it does leave some scars. And maybe 20, 30 years from now, those scars will still hurt. So with all that behind me, what's my next move? Well, Awaken. I've made a lot of progress on it, and with any luck, we should be shooting by late October through early November. And I'm psyched for it, you know? And yes, it's always possible that this could fail as well, but I can't quit just because it might fail. And that's the word, might. It might fail? I don't know, we'll see. As Peter Dinklage famously quoted, What did Beckett say? Ever tried. Ever failed. No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. Treat everyone kindly. And light up the night.